I don't think there's, they don't make new Perry bases, you know, so I mean, I'm sure he's seen all of them, you know, but uh, it, was, it was important to him, so. When Jim, uh, when Jim told me that he had an aneurysm, we, we sat at a table that I milked for him, and we had whiskey and we cried. And we talked about, uh, I told him how important he, he is to me, and he will always be important to me. He's, he's in my heart. And we sat there and, you know, there's only so many tears you can shed, and then it's time to get to work. And so uh, with a lot of the people that are here, we planned uh, a wonderful party for him. We called it, well, Jim wanted to call it the first annual aneurysmal. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Jim, hey, man, I mean, why don't, how about something else like Jim, Jim Party Band or something? Like that. And uh, so anyway, he, uh, we settled on bond stock, which seemed like a really good thing. And, and, and Chris, uh, Chris Martin and Chaz and uh, Jawbone Flaps, they came out. They were gracious enough to play a live set. Uh, just a great time. Everyone dancing on the lawn and having bonfires. And uh, it was just really, really good. Uh, good quality country time, you know. So good quality country. So after the party, we continued, you know, doing all the stuff we did, but I, I asked him to try and slow down a little bit, you know, that you didn't have to reach down and pick up the log. I could do that. We could do these different things together so that he didn't, uh, he didn't, he didn't rupture the aneurysm. He was really, he was really excited that they were able to figure out that they could do a surgery for him. And he, uh, I, I have a lot of peace in my heart knowing that it was something that Jim really wanted. Uh, and, um, and there were risks, there's always risks. And um, I picked Jim up from the hospital and we came back and he had a, he had a, a walker. And, and we got into the house and the first thing he did is he started carrying the walker down the hallway. And I said, Jim, it doesn't, that's not what that's for. You've got to have it on the ground. I don't want to scratch the floors, you know. So, so I was going to get some uh, the little tennis balls, you know, to put in there for him. But um, then uh, he called me, and, and, and Terry Volkson, uh said he was going to do a little, little fire down the hill. And Todd Duncan uh, came down, and, and my wife. Uh, it's one of it's one of those things where you have you have the responsibilities of life that you got to do, but then at a certain time you also just need to show up and be present and be there. And I'm so glad I did, and I appreciate you so much, Tara, for encouraging me to not stay in the office that day and to go out and have that fire, because that was the last time that I, that I really saw Jim, was at that fire. And, uh, and I, I waved goodbye thinking, I'm gonna see him again. And just like that, I get a call from Ginny Sunday night. Jim's back in the hospital. And I, I left our house, I came out, and I, I actually ended up following the ambulance that, that took him there on the way back out here. And we sat and we had whiskey inside and we, uh, we talked and we cried and, and uh, it was a really, really hard time. Because we had been through so many emotions of wondering how's Jim, you know, gonna do with the surgery and all that stuff. And then you felt like, okay, he made it through. You know, we, we got more time. And uh, the, the brutalness of life, you know, that's sometimes how it goes. So Ginny, after talking with the doctor, she uh, she decided it was time to, to let to let Jim go and asked me if I'd go and be with him. And I, I sat with him and I held his hand from the beginning to the end. And I told him I loved him. And I told him, you can go. We're going to take care of Ginny. And all of us are going to take care of Ginny. And that is, that is a commitment that is extremely important to me. And it's a commitment that I made to Jim. Jim, Jim was connected to, to everyone. I mean, every, every, every person he met was a friend. And he had a way of finding that common connection with people. And I love that about him, and I know all of us love that about him. And I think at this time where there's all sorts of unknowns and conflicts, it's so important that we all honor Jim and finding out the things that we have in common and working together so that we can continue his legacy. I'd like to invite uh, Terry Bollerton up to say some words next. Thank you. 